saw Brother Strong on his knees in the, in the latest washroom <laughs> doing the plumbing. <laughs> I say, hallelujah, I better get on my knees. <laughs> God is still in the blessed business, won't yes, he? Say, every time you need me, I'm always there. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but every time I've needed God, he has been there. Yes. God has been faithful yes. in my life. And I don't know about you, uh, but when I get up in the morning, the first thing I do is fall down on my knees. Yes. And I thank God uh, for his goodness. Yes. I thank God for his mercy. God continues to allow the paracletus and that Holy Spirit to direct my life. And I thank God for that. Yes. God is still in the blessing business. Yes, he is. When the devil tries to come up on me, he stumbles and he falls. Yes. So God is still in the blessing business. Yes. And when you're standing on the mountain, mm -hmm. that is certainly time to pray to God. And while I'm up here before I preach, I just want to thank all of you for coming out the other night for our movie night. Uh, the Woman King, we had a great turnout. And we had a great fellowship. That's what the church is all about. We can take back the night, can't we? Yeah. We started at 12 o'clock. I mean, at 12, started at 8 o'clock, and we didn't get out there at 10 o'clock. But I, I know that was kind of late for some of you all, but we'll try to get an early movie the next time. Uh, but you all know that uh, back in the day, we didn't leave home to 9.30 going to the burning spear. Y'all know about that? Don't all right, all right. <laughs> y'all know I'm right, don't you? All right. A uh, high shaft for real. Where y'all go now? Where they go now, Brother Harry? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, you know. that was back in the day. God is still in the blessing business. We come up to the gospel message. Uh, when you go for a steak dinner, if they serve you a salad or soup, you have not had the entree. Uh, so we come up now to the entree, which is the gospel message. And uh, so we come up to that gospel message now. We look at it. The Gospel of John. And uh, we're going to look at that ninth chapter of the Gospel of John. Those of you that have your Bibles, would you stand for the reading of the sacred text? Uh, today, we're going to look at the ninth chapter of the Gospel of John, verses 1 through verse 7. Uh, and my key verse today will be verse 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Mm -hmm. Today we shall use for a theme the light of the world. You may be seated. The light of the world. Every now and then I walk out of the house at night because they say that uh, if you want to see the stars, you have to go out at night. Well, that's a very interesting statement because the stars are shining all the time. Uh, but it's just that they, you can only see them in darkness. All right. And so when we go out at night, the stars are shining their brightness because they are shining in the dark. Uh, you know, so when we look at the Christian life, the world will see you better in this dark world. Yes. We are to be the light and the salt of the world. Hallelujah. So our mission is to be just like those stars, is that we are to shine bright in darkness. Mm -hmm. You can't go out there and see the stars now because it's not dark enough. Uh, but uh, when you go to your various functions, family reunions, and different things, and you see all the darkness in this fallen world, that is time for us to shine our brightness. Today, I will teach that God proved his power to open the eyes of the soul by opening the eyes of the body. God will open the eyes of the soul by first opening the physical eyes of the body. So as we look at our lesson text today. Uh, the background of our scripture today deals with an event in this lesson 
that took place in Jerusalem, probably at the final, on the final Sabbath day or during the Feast of Tabernacle. Uh, so we see here now the Lord is commanded to, to leave the temple as he leaves the temple. Uh, as, and we can see in that 59th verse uh, of the chapter, of the 8th chapter, uh, they took him up to stone and to cast at him, and Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, so he passed by. In other words, they were about to stone Jesus to death as he leaves the temple. So now as Jesus leaves this temple, he encounters a man that's blind. Mm -hmm. And Jesus saw this man, and as we get into our lesson text, and Jesus, but I want you to remember that as they attempted to stone Jesus on this day, this was also the Sabbath day. Yeah. Uh, and Jesus, in our ninth chapter, our lesson text day, and by the way, they're going to deal with this blind man throughout this ninth chapter. All right. But I'm going to tell the story from the start to the end of it, uh -huh. end at the seventh verse. Uh, but the rest of the chapter deals with the world trying to adjust to this man that now can see. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know how the world was when you got saved? You know how some of those friends you used to hang out with, you couldn't hang out with them no more? No. Man. You know how they called and told you that they couldn't have the family reunion at your house because you wouldn't allow them to bring that look and that dope in your house? <laughs> all right, all right. Are y'all with me? All right, all right. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. I, I picked up uh, one of the members coming to, to our family reunion when I had it in Chicago. I picked him up and he said, uh, can I smoke this blunt in this car? I say, I don't think so. <laughs> I wasn't about to lose my car because somebody wanted to get it. Come on, y'all, y'all, y'all. All right, all right. So, so, so anyway, we come up to Jesus. These people finna stone Jesus to death. And he's leaving the temple on the Sabbath day. And Jesus passed by and saw a man which was blind from birth. And now you see, the scriptures say Jesus passed by and he saw a man. Mm -hmm. See, when Jesus sees you, he looks at your whole life. Yes. Matter of fact, he knows every hair on your head. He knows every thought that's about to come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. They say Jesus saw him. Yes. When Jesus saw this man, Jesus knew that he was born black. All right. Jesus knew about all of the things that his family had gone through to try to get his sight for him. Uh -huh. But this man was born blind. Yes. And so, so we see here, born blind. And, and the disciples had a very interesting question in uh, verse number two. Uh, they wanted to know, because in verse number two, and the disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? Mm -hmm. This man or his parents yeah. that he was born blind? And now you may say, well, that's a rather strange question. Yeah. But you know, in antiquity, uh, any time there was a, uh, some type of defection or some type of uh, affliction on a person, uh, people thought that it was from sin. So they said, who did sin? This man or his parents. Now, now, now you would think that. Why would you think that a person that was born blind had sin? Well, see, some of the teachings in the Old Testament, you remember Esau and Jacob. They was fighting in the womb, and Esau wanted to kill Jacob in his mother's womb. Come on. Yeah. Go back to Genesis and read it. And then in Psalm 58, verse 3, it says uh, that they were, he was born a sinner, and the first thing that would come out of his mouth would be lies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they do this Old Testament stuff, so they say, did he sin in the womb, or, or did his parents sin? And you know the scriptures say that the sins of the parents is passed on down to the child. Yes, so they say, uh, if this man was born with this affliction, 
there must have been someone who had seen. So I tell you, told you, Jesus looked at this man, and Jesus saw, and Jesus knew all his background just like he knows your background. You see, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. But you can never fool God none of the time. Because God knows you. He knows your motive. And see, that's the difference. Nobody else can see your motive or understand your motive but God. So, so, so Jesus answered this question in verse number three. And Jesus answered and said, neither had this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifested in him. Jesus said, no, no, neither did this man sin nor his parents, but his blindness came upon him for the glory of God. Yes. His blindness came up on him, so uh, when Shannon gets ready to preach on, on Sunday, he can talk about the miracle with this blind man. Yeah. So this blind man is gonna be talked about years from now, how this miracle was manifested in his life. So, so he said, neither this man nor his parents, but his blindness is for the glory of God. Oh, you've heard people come up here and give their testimony about how sick they were and how they had this disease and that disease and God healed them. See, God has a permissive will and God has an active will. Sometimes God permits some things to happen, but actively he's working it out so that you will have a testimony. See, see, see if you never had a test, then you would never know how to, how to have a moaning. All right, all right. Am I right about it? That's it. And so, 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 so you, know, you know, if you've ever been a teacher, uh, you know your students, in order for, for, for you do to tell what they know, they have to have a test. Yes, sir. So every now and then, God has to see what you know. Yes, sir. What you know. And then when you're not serving God properly, those enemies will take over you. And you all know, if you got children, they're going to be on your lap when they're young, mm -hmm. but they're going to be on your heart when they get old. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. They're going to be somewhere. Somewhere, yes, sir. So, 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 so anyway, we see here that Jesus said, but this is for the glory of God. And Jesus said, listen to me. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Jesus said, listen, this man being born blind, this is an opportunity for me. See, I must work the works while it is day. Now, now, now you know, I, I used to watch my Uncle Tom farm. And uh, he didn't have a, never had a watch, he never had a cell phone, but he always knew what time it was. Yeah. Because when they, they, and you know, that's why we have church at 11 o'clock. Some of you all don't know that. We have church at 11 o'clock because well, when the farmers would go and farm, uh, they would get up early in the morning to farm and they would come back home for breakfast at 11 o'clock. And then they would get showered and go to church. Uh, so, so, so that's why, you know, we have church at 11 o'clock because they had come and, and got ready from the farm. But see, my Uncle Tom understand, at 6 o'clock in the morning, the sun is going to come up. And at 9 o'clock, it's going to be straight in the east. And at 12 o'clock, it's going to be straight up. And at 3 o'clock, it's going to be over this way. And then that day, they can look up and tell you what time it is. But, but you know, we got to, oh, my watch broke. I don't know what to see. See, they didn't need no watch. They, they knew what time it was always going to be. So Jesus said, see, see, my ministry, being born, is, is going to be in the morning of my ministry. And my miracles that I'm going to work is going to be at noon and in the afternoon. But, but he said, I'm going to have to do my work while it's still day because at night time they're going to crucify me and they're going to carry me to Calvary. So I'm not going to have time to do anything once I'm dead. So think, think about you. You better do some good while you're on this side of the joy. Because once you're dead, you know, I, I have a sister that called me up and tell me about all these folks' birthdays who died and how old they would be if they were still alive. I said, wait a minute, they ain't got no more birthdays. <laughs> but she called me every week to me about who all birthday it is, I'm telling you. So, but anyway, I, I want you all to understand that Jesus said, I, I got an opportunity here. See, 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 healing this man is an opportunity. 
See, when you understand God, when you understand crisis and dealing with Jesus, see, 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 see in some languages, crisis mean, the word crisis means the same as opportunity. So Jesus said, this is an opportunity for me. This is an opportunity for me to work yeah. while well, still there. So when nighttime comes, I'm going to go to Calvary, but then I'm going to put my healing power at the foot of the church. And then the church is going to be able to continue the work that I started down here. But Jesus said, God gave me a calling card. And while I'm down here on earth, my calling card is the miracles that I'm going to be able to work. So you will know that I'm from God because the miracles I'll be able to work. And when you see the miracles that I'm going to work, that there's going to be no doubt that I'm from God. Uh, so we see here, and Jesus said, and when he had turned and spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay in the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And now Jesus did something very strange here because he didn't always heal people the same way. He spat on the ground in the mud, and he took it and stirred it up, and he took the clay. And, and you know, this was before COVID, y'all, so y'all have to... But, but, but anyway, so, so Jesus sped in the ground and took the clay and, and put the clay and put the clay on the man's eyes. And, and, and then he said unto the man, in my seventh verse, he said, Go wash in the pool of Salama, which is interpreted sent. He went his way, therefore, and wash came seen. Jesus sped on the ground, took the clay and put it on the man's eyes. And he said, Listen, go wash in the pool of Salam. Now, 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 because this pool was a half a mile away from where this man was. Uh, so Jesus said, I, I want you to put this clay on your eyes, mm -hmm. but I want you to walk. <laughs> I, I want you to walk still blind a half a mile. Yeah. I know some of y'all would say, no, nah, I don't want no clay on my eyes. I'm not walking. I'm going to go to another doctor. I got to get a second opinion. Right. But you see, this man had already gotten all of the opinions there was. So, yeah. so, so he had to rely on what Jesus is saying. So, 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 so the Bible said yeah. in that seventh verse, he went his way, therefore, mm -hmm. and watch came sin. Now, what are you saying, Pastor? The man was blessed in his obedience. See, any time you see Jesus healing folk, mm -hmm. you remember Naaman that didn't want to wash in the Jordan because he said it was too dirty of a place. He said, don't you have some other rivers? <laughs> yes, sir. You, you know, that's cleaner than, than, than the Jordan. Yeah. So, 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 so this man didn't hesitate like Naaman. He went, he walked. Yeah. And you see, sometimes our disobedience can lead us to collapse and calamity. Yeah. So, so this man walked a half a mile and he washed. And when he came back, see, and now I want you to get confused because it wasn't in the clay. It wasn't in the healing of the clay that was on this man's eyes. But it was the healing took place because the man's obedience. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's obedience. You, you, you see, I went the other day and got my third booster shot, but I messed around and got a flu shot in that arm, too. So, uh, I told my wife that night, I'm feeling pretty good, but I got up the next morning, I couldn't move. But because I was obedient, yes, you know, I, I got some immunity to that virus. Am I right about it? Right. So, so the healing is always in our obedience. So, so as this man walked, as he walked to wash the mud from his eyes, and he came back to see. Now, I don't have time to go through all of the the, the whole chapter here to help you to understand the world was not ready to see this man who was a beggar. Mm -hmm. You know, and back in antiquity, they didn't have no social security. They didn't have all the other stuff that folks could get when they are afflicted. So this man, only thing that he could do was beg. But, but, but now, see, see, this man now can see. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. because he can see, now he can go to work. He can do a whole lot of things yes, sir. Yes, sir. that he couldn't do because he was born to Jesus. Said, I got to get somebody that didn't just get blind the other day. I had to get somebody that the community saw that he was born black. The community had been seeing him begging for many years. But now, the man can see. Yes, sir. And sin is because of his obedience. Let me just break this thing down to you. Light. Light in darkness. 
And Jesus told him, said, as long as I'm in the world, mm -hmm. I'm going to be the light yes, right. of yes, the world. Sir. Yes, sir. Now let me take you back to Genesis, because in Genesis, God said in the third verse, he said, let there be light. Yes, sir. And there was light. But, but, but now pay attention because he didn't make the sun and the moon until the 14th verse. So, so, so what light was he talking about? Yes, sir. He said, let there be light. Yes. And there was light. But he didn't make the sun and the moon until down in verse 14. So the light that he was talking about was the light that shines in the face of God. The light that shines in our heart today. The light that illuminates us to be the light of the world. Yes, sir. The same light. In Revelation chapter 21, uh, when the New Jerusalem had appeared, they said, we will no longer need the sun and the moon, but God will illuminate the city. Yes, sir. That's the light that I'm talking about. Right. The light of God. That's the light that I'm talking about. The light that we will see in God. So let me tell you something about this light. Every time I look in the face of a drug addict, and I've looked in the face of a many drug addicts that I've counseled. But I just want you to see, I see darkness. So on what we have to say to a person that, in all that darkness, we have to make sure that we can say to them, let there be light. Because the only thing that's going to free them of that conviction and compulsion is light. I look at the face of a person, young person out there on that street with a gun in his hand. 14 years of age, trying to hijack somebody's car and take it from him. In darkness, he's trying to hijack that car. In darkness, yes, he was raised without God being in his life. In, in darkness, he was not raised in the nurture and admonition of, let there be light yes, sir. in that person's life. Yes. I look at that married man that's been cheating on his wife. Got a beautiful home and about to walk into a court and have an unjust judge to tell him when he can see his children. Jesus. Yes, sir. When his children can visit him. Isn't that a shame? Half his income gonna be taken away from him. He eventually may even end up in poverty. I just want you to know, let there be light. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I look at the face of that bully. Bullying children in school and bullying children. Yeah, let me tell you something about a bully. A bully ain't nothing but a big coward. Yeah. A bully is a person that's hurting, that needs attention. Uh, so we need to get that bully and say, let there be light yes, in the face of that bully. Let that bully have some light. Yes, sir. So he can see, or she can see, because we got some girl bullies out there. So, so, so they can see. I look at the face of that runaway child. That child that's getting ready to run away from home. That child that no longer wants to go under the dictates of their parents. That child that rather go out into the far country. And I'm going to tell you something, a runaway child doesn't last for 48 hours on the street before the world just take them up. Yes, sir. Let there be light. And let there be light enough to make that runaway child wants to stay at home and love his parents and let that nurture. I, I, I say, let there be light. Yes, sir. I see that person parking in the big store parking lot, up close to somebody's car with a white van, mm -hmm. looking ready to snatch up. It could it be another color van, but don't, don't just look at folks with white van. <laughs> Getting ready to snatch up somebody and put yes, them in that van yes, and sir. take them off into sex trafficking. Yes, I just say, let there be light. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And there is light. Yes. We are called to be the light of the world. Yes, sir. Look at that business that's getting ready to steal his company's money. Let there be light. Because ain't no way you can go with no stolen money. Ain't no way you can ever go with somebody's stolen wife either. So let there be light yes, sir. in that businessman life. I look at that man that's got his big job. He could have a big job in education, a big job in his company, but he sits in his office and on his computer that the company has given him, he brings up pornography. And let me tell you something about pornography. If you deal in pornography, you will never be faithful to anyone. Because pornography carries you further in your sexual imagination than your spouse or anybody could ever satisfy. 
So you better watch what you do. So my thing today is that let there be light. The light of the world will change all of these situations. And that's what we are called to do. All of these people are operating in darkness. But our mission is to bring light to these situations. Our mission is to let this world know that God said, as long as I'm in the world, he's the light of the world. But even when I go out, I'm going to put that light at the foot of the church. Nobody else can give you this kind of light. You can't get it from your job. You can't get it from your community. God says, Shannon, I am the light of the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In order for you to see what's going on over there in Ukraine, in order for you to see what's going on over there in Mubasa, when we send Brother Harris over there in Mubasa, but Brother Harris is not just going over there to make a trip and take a vacation, but Brother Harris is going over to Mubasa to bring some light. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some yes, sir. yes he does. Are you out there? God is calling you to be part of this life. We live in a dark world. And the world can see this light better in darkness. Uh, but I just want you to understand something. The darkness can never comprehend the light.